In the last video, we saw that after decades of overhype, we may finally be on the verge of the flying car revolution. The first generation of electric vertical and takeoff landing vehicles are going on sale this year, and there's a huge list of companies committed to building them. From nimble startups to automotive, tech, and aerospace giants, governments and principalities around the world are vying to be early adopters of this tech. You'd be forgiven for thinking that this revolution is imminent. But if you spoke to the average person, you may well get the opposite impression. There are no shortage of critics that decry flying cars as a fantasy, and they have no shortage of reasons to suggest so. But how is this possible? If there's so many problems with flying cars, why are big firms investing in them? With so much confusion around the modern interpretation of the flying car, we should ask, are the problems that critics cite legitimate? Are the problems even relevant? Should we even call them flying cars? Ask most people, and they will tell you that flying cars are a fantasy, a relic of science fiction, not a technology with serious promise. When I told some of my friends that flying cars may be relatively affordable in the next few years, they looked at me like I was completely crazy. Clearly, they don't watch my videos. Yet industry is well underway designing these vehicles, and governments are already drafting legislation to support their introduction. Today, there are multiple tests going on all around the world, some of them carrying real passengers. In fact, you can even buy a Shudo VTOL flying car right now. Well, providing you've got $340,000 lying around and you're willing to wait nine months for delivery. So there you go. There's nothing stopping flying cars. They're already here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, perhaps that's not quite the transport revolution you'd hoped for. It's hard to see imminent mass adoption at such a price point. You can buy new helicopters for less, although admittedly you can't drive those on the road. The PAL-V is a real car that flies. Despite its cost, it may turn out to be commercially viable in small volumes. We will have to wait and see. But whether it's successful or not isn't really relevant to the flying car revolution. The PAL-V isn't representative of the flying cars that are gaining increasing media attention. But it does highlight the problem. When we talk about flying cars, what vehicles are we talking about? This video series aims to assess the likelihood and timescales of a flying car revolution. In the next few videos, we're going to look in detail at the real problems facing flying cars. And there are many. But first, we must separate them from the criticisms that are unfounded, irrelevant, or exaggerated. How can we identify which arguments are relevant? There are many types of flying car, some of which can be easily confused. Despite their apparent similarity, the viability of each type varies greatly. For this video series, we're going to focus on the most viable type. Before we can filter arguments, we must have a clear understanding of exactly what vehicles we're talking about. There is a history of hype and science fiction surrounding this technology. A lot of that stems from the term flying car, which can be misleading terminology. Many so-called flying cars aren't actually cars. Side note, if you watch my vertical farming series, you may recall a similar problem. In reality, only certain types of vertical farm offer a viable and scalable solution. Proponents and critics of vertical farms often confuse one type of farm for another and get erroneous or obsolete conclusions as a result. Something I call the fuzzy definition problem. Flying cars are no exception, and I expect fuzzy definitions to affect many future topics that I cover. 
So which is the most promising vehicle? The common image of a flying car is a sleek, futuristic design. It uses some sort of levitation technology and flies with aerofoils or rotor control. Unsurprisingly, this image doesn't lend credibility to the flying car concept and finds itself front and center of incredulous articles. It seems almost silly to bring this type of car up, but it's important to remember this is what most people think of when they hear the term flying car. This immediately makes the flying car concept seem highly implausible, though this association will likely fade once real flying cars take to the sky in any significant quantity. As you saw in the last video, there are in fact real flying cars that are on sale or soon to be on sale. Unsurprisingly, these vehicles often find themselves the target of critics. Due to the challenge of combining cars with flight, they're very expensive vehicles. You will also hear that there isn't enough space to build all the airstrips required for everyone to have a flying car. This is a fair critique. Realistically, these flying cars can't scale to a global transport solution because the infrastructure barrier and vehicle cost are significant. They may succeed in a short-term niche for people who can afford them, but their future scope is limited. The need to have a vehicle that behaves as both a car and an aircraft poses an unnecessary design compromise that makes flying cars impractical. The problem with flying cars is the car bit. If taken literally, the hype around flying cars suggests that people want their cars to be able to fly. In reality, the excitement around flying cars is the promise of a much faster, yet cheap and practical transport solution. Something you can use with similar availability to your current car. Whether it's actually a car or not is largely irrelevant. For this reason, we're going to exclude the requirement for flying cars to drive on the ground and focus exclusively on aerial vehicles. Media commentary accepts this requirement and often ditches the car bit, yet retains the flying car term due to its allure and history. This is good for familiarity and hype, but with that name comes a long list of failures and criticisms of past flying car efforts. I'm no exception, of course. For simplicity, I'm going to refer to them as flying cars or MAVs for the remainder of this video series. But remember, when I say flying car, I'm actually talking about exclusively aerial vehicles that will fill the role that flying cars were supposed to have. Avetol Mavs, which I will just call Mavs, is the vehicle I believe will have the highest future viability. But why? And what specific criticisms are there for this type of vehicle? Firstly, a scalable model for Mavs must be VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing. So we can ignore criticisms related to runways. Helipad and vertiport infrastructure are still necessary, but are much less of a problem than runways. We will focus on electric variants of this technology. The pros and cons of an electric powertrain will become apparent in future videos. But for now, electric propulsion greatly simplifies the vehicle, making them easier to maintain and better suited for short trips. Short trips for combustion engines means lots of thermal cycles and thus very expensive maintenance. Side note, some of the designs utilize hybrid range extension to overcome the limitations of current battery technology. Hybrid is a combination of electric power and combustion engine. A hybrid drive system is extremely complex. However, using a combustion engine to recharge the batteries is relatively simple. Hybrid may be a short-term solution for long-range maps until battery technology improves. Collectively, the electric powertrain combined with vertical takeoff and landing is known as Evtol. Most of the flying cars now shown in the media are Evtol designs. People increasingly accept the viability of this design since most commercial drones are Evtols. There are many design architectures for Evtols that we will see in future videos. Scaling up drones pushes the limits of this technology and critics are quick to point out the range and payload limitations of using an electric powertrain. This is a valid criticism. Battery technology is a significant bottleneck and one we will look into. But what about the biggest critique of flying cars? Drivers or pilots.
If you think drivers are bad in two dimensions, wait until you see them in three. If you've read about flying cars, you may have seen a comment like this. And it's not an unreasonable concern. 94% of car crashes are human error. While there are fewer things to hit in the air, the lethality of collisions is much higher, not to mention the risk of collateral damage below. Many of the first generation of MAVs are manual or semi-autonomous. However, by the time flying cars are widely adopted, regulation will mandate autonomous or heavily semi-autonomous flight for most airspaces. For this reason, we will assume full or highly autonomous vehicles unless stated otherwise. Therefore, we can filter out bad drivers as a criticism. However, the reliability of autonomous systems must be addressed. Now we have a clear idea of what is meant by flying cars, we can better identify the genuine concerns. But since I brought up critics, let's start with the most famous detractor of flying cars, Elon Musk. Over the last few years, Elon Musk has stated he's skeptical about flying cars, stating that if someone doesn't maintain their flying car, it could drop a hubcap and guillotine you. And your anxiety level will not decrease as a result of things that weigh a lot buzzing around your head. From this, it sounds like Elon is talking about real cars that fly, although he has on occasion referenced drones. Since we aren't talking about cars, hubcaps aren't actually relevant, but the point still stands. Maintenance and the risk of things falling out the sky is a common critique of flying cars. But as we'll see in the next video, the risk might be overstated. Elon's less headline-grabbing statements around noise and visual pollution are actually far more pertinent as they pose a much greater challenge. Helicopters are loud, and the idea of lots of them in the air should raise red flags. Mavs are quieter than helicopters, but making them significantly quieter is a critical challenge we will look at. Perhaps it's not such a surprise that Elon's not a fan of flying cars. After all, they are competitors to two of his existing businesses, Tesla and The Boring Company. While he approves of transport being able to move in three dimensions, he instead proposes a massive 3D network of tunnels as a scalable solution for cars. We may see how such a concept stacks up against flying cars in a future video. As we've seen, some arguments critics make are valid concerns, others uh, not so much. You see, part of the problem is how we perceive new technologies, as we tend to reason by analogy. This is a powerful method for reaching a quick understanding, but it's not without its problems. We usually think about flying cars by mapping our experience of cars, planes, and helicopters. But this can give a very distorted view of how they will operate. If we want to determine the safety, cost, or noise of flying cars, should we base it on the safety of cars, aeroplanes, helicopters, drones? After all, these technologies vary greatly. Mavs are different, and thus the way we think about them should also be different. This can be seen to an extent in the following arguments. Flying cars will be swerving to avoid each other with all the congestion. This is based on our experience of driving, but driving on the ground is not the same as flying. Driving from A to B is essentially one dimensional, while you may have a few routes and lanes available. Congestion is the result of very finite paths and is greatly exacerbated by junctions. Mavs can utilize most of the three dimensions available. With near infinite routes and no junctions, autonomous Mavs have no need to swerve. They communicate with each other in a fraction of a second, well in advance of any possible collision. Drone swarms already show us how effectively space can be managed with near instantaneous communication. Congestion is only plausible in dense cities and around popular landing zones. But swerving and safety isn't the concern here. It's actually public annoyance. Flying cars will be toys for the rich. Currently, flying cars are only available to those with significant income, but that won't be true for future Mavs. This argument is based on the high cost of helicopters and vehicles like the PAL-V. Mavs have a lot more in common with consumer drones, and that will allow them to be much cheaper than helicopters. But how much cheaper? We'll find out. 
Breaking down means falling out the sky. Can you imagine how many people would die per day from falling cars? By now, I hope the problem with this logic is apparent. When thinking about the risk of falling vehicles, should we think about cars, helicopters, drones? I'd love to see your thoughts about this in the comments. I'm going to address this directly in the next video, along with other major safety concerns relating to maths. If you want to be notified when that's posted, click the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you apply this approach, you can probably come up with your own answers to the following criticisms of flying cars that I believe are largely irrelevant. Flying is scary. 40% of people have some sort of anxiety related to flying. Flying cars have to use too much energy fighting gravity. Autonomous is not finished on the ground, so we're not ready for 3D. I know we didn't cover too much new ground in this video. I think it's important to clarify misconceptions for a topic with a history of hype and disappointment. Now we have a clear idea of what we're dealing with, we can finally get to the interesting part, the real problems. This will expose the true viability and possible timeframes for this technology. The main arguments we will address can be categorized into the following. Safety, societal impacts, regulation, infrastructure, practicality, price performance. One of the biggest legitimate concerns that people have regarding flying cars is safety. We're going to look at this in detail for the next video in this series. What are the safety risks of flying cars? Can we really solve them? Will flying cars be safe? Let's find out.